Hey guys, I'm down here. This is going to be my chapter review to One Piece 950, The Soldier's Dream. Now, this was a, I like this chapter. I thought it was pretty good. We got to uh, see different perspectives, different scenarios through the chapter, and I really enjoyed it. There wasn't a lot of action or very much action at all, to be, to be fair. Um, we didn't get to see anyone getting their asses whooped or anything like that. But the chapter was a nice kind of world builder, story builder, and... A nice way to keep the story rolling. Nothing much really happened beyond that, apart from like a little bit of backstory, a little bit more history, like I said. But um, I did enjoy the chapter, and I thought it's pretty decent. So going into the chapter, the first thing that happens is we see this little bit of we see kid kind of flashing back, and then going back to the present, and flashing back again. And essentially, he's he's walking out of Udon prison uh, while thinking about a conversation he just had with Luffy. So he was saying to Luffy asking him if he was going to actually fight Kaido again Luffy saying yeah you want to team up and we see essentially here that kid now has trust issues he doesn't he does not want to ally with anyone he doesn't want to team up with anyone he does not want to be with anybody else besides his own crew if they're in his crew he's the, he, they're the only people kid will now trust you see him uh, telling Luffy that he's an idiot for even asking to to ally with him um, especially after what happened to um, to killer so kid like uses all the metal around to give himself a huge ass new arm he thinks of hawkins he thinks of uh scratch man apu and he's like i'm done making alliances i'm not gonna kill you think it think of it as me being generous and he walks out with killer and he's like let's go get our comrades back and i i really like this kind of panel because you can see the determination the grim determination in kid's eyes he is done with people he's gonna just go and kick the shit out of everyone i'm hoping i'm really hoping he gets to he runs in with Hawkins and he runs into Hawkins and Apu, wherever he is. Um, and he gets to provide them with the ultimate ass whooping because we know he's he's ruthless. He'll probably kill them if he has the opportunity. So I'm hoping he takes the opportunity and absolutely decimates them for what they did and, and for the part they played in essentially uh, ruining Killer's life. Um, so yeah, he's he's ready to go get his his uh, comrades back wherever they may be imprisoned. Uh, surprisingly, not in Udon, um, but yeah, that's that part of the story essentially concluded. Um, so we don't actually know where Kid's going. We just know that he's going to go and attempt to retrieve his fallen comrades. We then go to the prisoner's mine inside, uh, which is where Kid and Killer just came out of, and we see that all the former samurai find out that Straw Hat Luffy is actually a pirate and obviously they have an aversion to pirates uh because of kaido and what he's done so they're all there complaining about the fact that you know luffy's a, a pirate why did they bring a pirate to come and save them you know they can't trust a pirate at any moment he might he might backstab them um and obviously hyogoro and raizo and um we even see kawamatsu they're there backing luffy up saying we we need to trust in the guy this guy's the key to defeating kaido and hyogoro's there realizing that you know we they may have gotten their spirits back, their desire to fight back, their will to stand against Kaido, but it's still not enough and we're missing something. And there was a funny moment where one of the samurai is just like, yo, Raizo, you know what? You always look like an old man. Uh, old man, maybe this is, just, this is just your natural look. How do we know you came from 20 years ago? So I thought that was a really like, it was a harsh burn, but it was, it was a decent point. And then we see um, Luffy basically still wasting away Ota otama's just there like oh i'm so glad you're okay that was a funny part as well you see um, monosuke saying like he does not look okay he looks like he's dying but essentially what this is this scene serves to tell us is that chopper is actually cre <coughs> creating some sort of vaccine some sort of <coughs> some sort of antibody he says um but essentially a vaccine for for luffy to to combat the the mummy virus and obviously you see luffy's body here he he definitely was affected by it he couldn't outwill the the virus which i'm happy about that would have been stupid uh so he is actually being damaged by it and chopper's giving him a, a big time or balling um for for thinking that you know for acting without thinking about the consequences yet again uh here we see momonosuke saying that you know what luffy may be an idiot but he's amazing i wouldn't have been able to do it so luffy starts roasting him calling him a coward an idiot and all that stuff obviously momonosuke gets uh really riled up about this but then he's thrown out by i'm not sure either chopper or, or otama 
essentially running out to where all the samurai are gathered and this is while they're in their state of you know what are we fighting for we know that luffy's here and he, he can spearhead our operation you know being the powerhouse that he is even though he's a pirate but what are we fighting for what's our purpose who are we fighting for so at that precise moment is when momonosuke comes out every every samurai there recognizes momonosuke they see in his face probably um a lot of lord uh odin in him they all recognize instantly who he is drop down to their knees bow their heads down to their their the son, the leader the son of their leader and uh, who would who would now rightfully be the heir to the throne technically but he's he's heir to the shogun and they they've now fa- found what they're essentially going to fight for they found this what hyogoro calls a dream but essentially he even says it later um essentially their goal what are they fighting for who are they fighting for and is it worth it and they look at they look at momonosuke and they're like yeah this is this is what we're fighting for and momonosuke here has the opportunity to either like shy away from this responsibility or identify it and take it on and i actually thought this was really really uh it was a really good bit of development for momonosuke seeing that you know they don't they don't really see me in front of them they see my father in front of them they see the weight of the kozuki clan or the shadow of the kozuki clan in front of them and that's what they're fighting for and I've never felt this much weight on my shoulders. So instead of running away or crumbling, he takes all of that responsibility and assumes leadership role. He's like, I'm going to tell you what happened on that day at Odin Castle. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I'm going to tell you why we're here before you. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. So I thought that was a really good um, kind of development on Momonosuke's part, giving him that leadership. Even though he's a child, he is the heir to the throne, essentially. And it it makes the samurai less kind of we want to serve the idea of the kozuki and more like they're actually serving the last of the kozuki well the last of the kozuki um kawamatsu then says that he has another job to do he's needed elsewhere and he's going to go there before the final battle so that's what he does we then go to kuri uh, in Wano, which is uh, where shuten maru and kinemon and inuarashi are and he tells them what happened over the last 20 years so 10 years ago um the samurai that were with him they all gathered together having grown impatient and decided to storm onigashima and every last one of them every last one of them died on the way there i don't think they actually got to onigashima considering all their graves are in kuri or they actually all died and it was announced and then shuten maru made their graves like honorary graves uh without the bodies in kuri and what happened was these samurai realized they, they knew they were told that they'd have to wait for 20 years for the for the possibility of kinemon and momonosuke and the other scabbards or the sheaths red scabbards whatever they're called returning but they couldn't wait and the reason for this was and even though shuten maru was actually quite loyal he's like uh, uh, you know kinemon will definitely return with momonosuke they were just like we've got no food we've got no we've got no water we we, we refuse to serve orochi so we're gonna die of sickness and disease and, and age before we even get the chance to fight so and you see them um you see kaido's men destroying the well destroying crops and stuff like that so they 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 literally had no choice they had no food no water they were gonna die of illness disease all of that good stuff so they wanted to die with their swords in their hands they wanted to die as samurai rather than just sitting down and waiting for death to approach them and shuten maru tells them straight he's like this is a dog's death you're gonna go and die um die without purpose not necessarily without honor but without purpose we need to gather together all our men and storm onigashima when uh kinemon and stuff return but they say you know what when we were kids we used to have this chant this like test of courage and what it was was it was an, an acronym essentially throw away the name throw away the wits and they can con- condense this all down into a, a term um which essentially meant sunachi that didn't mean sunachi it meant uh, the term was sunachi and it was previously translated as snatch but you see on jamini's box what it, it's an abbreviation of throw away thy name and wits uh, essentially what they're saying is, is like they'd use this to kind of remind themselves when they were kids that you know get rid of get rid of the idea of you know fear fear name wit get rid of the identity just go in mindless go in calm go in without that fear and just attack straight on just basically do not concentrate do not think about the repercussions essentially but this is the the key part here is is that zoro is the one who taught momonosuke that term to use when he was um when he was slicing down with his sword so that suggests once again that zoro has some sort of connection to wano either he was born in wano and he learned it there or his teacher 
was born in Wano, and when Zoro was taught by him, he was taught in the ways of Wano. And then Sunachi was the term that came to uh, came to Zoro from there. This term of kind of get rid of your uh, get rid of your name, get rid of the wits, don't think about it, do what you gotta do. Shuten Maru looks tears in his eyes as his men go and essentially die to Kaido. He's there questioning why it took 20 years. Kinemon and Inorashi can't provide an answer, but Shuten Maru is like, you know what? He rallies his men. He's like, I'm going to go fight Kaido. I want you guys to come with me. His men will rally to the cause. And Kinemon's like, balling. We got Ashura Doji to, our, uh, to join our ranks. And Ashura's like, you guys are still the same as you were 20 years ago, but we've had 20 years to get stronger. We're going to kick some ass. So Inorashi and Shuten Maru are just there hugging like, right, right, 20 years to get stronger. And uh, then they kind of annoy each other and they're about to kick off. But then we come to the part where where we see Zoro and um, Hiyori in Hakumai. And we see Zoro essentially protecting uh, Hiyori, who's actually within this shrine, this Enma shrine. And Lord Enma, if you've watched Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, sorry, is the god of hell, kind of like Hades, uh, according to Manga Stream's translation, in the Buddhist religion. Um, but he's fighting off all these ninja, which is just constantly attacking them, barraging them. And he's, he's just there huffing and puffing. I assume his injury is still plaguing him, because Zoro isn't usually one to huff and puff. Even with tons of enemies, I mean, like he slew, he slay, he slew, slown, slay, he slay, he had slain many people, uh, or many uh, many people within the fisherman arc, and he wasn't really tired in that entire war. So like, yeah, just these like 10, 20 ninjas, however many they are, shouldn't really pose so much of an issue unless they're vastly stronger than the fisherman, which I doubt physically at least. So we see Hiyori, uh, or Komurasaki, however you want to refer to her as. And she's there like, I, I was just in your way, right? So I was like, yeah, whatever. But essentially what this what this little scene uh, does for us is Zoro's there saying he can't let her die because he couldn't face Momonosuke if he let her die. But he's also looking for his other, his his sword, which was stolen by the the, the bandit at the bridge, whose name was uh, something, but his, his sword, Shus Shusui. And she's there saying that, yeah, she that, that's cool, but that she's worried about Otoko. And Zoro tells her that she'll be fine, at least physically, but he's, he's adamant that he needs to find her sword or his sword and she knows where to go she's like all right that was at Ringo's Ringo being the district or the province sorry uh at Oihagi bridge which was translated as bandits bridge or something like that and Zoro says he needs it before the final battle all that good stuff but his this kind of gathers into the final point which is he can't forgive Orochi and I didn't really get this part of the chapter. He says that he can't forgive Orochi and he will definitely avenge Tonayasu, mm -hmm. which I was like, yeah, cool. But then you see Komurasaki or Hiri say, I wish I could kill Orochi with my own hands. And Zoro's just giving her this death glare with one with his one open eye, his right eye. And the reason why I'm confused is, is he there thinking like, that's a bold statement to make? Are, are you going to actually live up to it? Or is he there thinking, if I get in the situation where I can give you the kill, I'll give you the kill? Because it seems to be a very serious talk, and he's just looking at her like the, the way I'm seeing it is he's looking at her and assessing like, can she do it? Could she do it if I gave her the opportunity? So I'm thinking Zoro might, if he can, give her the opportunity, opportunity to kill Orochi with her bare hands. Um, we then come to the flower capital, where X Drake is being asked by Hawkins if that he's um, what what's up essentially. You're acting really strange. What's what's gotten into you? Hawkins says it's nothing. I feel like Hawkins needs to um, needs to betray Kaido. I mean, like Hawkins is gonna. He seems to be that guy who has some level of morality to him. Um, Hawkins maybe not so much, but we see that they're both there looking down on an imprisoned and uh, a cuffed law, and he's bloodied, beaten, and he's there just smiling at them, fearless. He's looking at them, and he essentially what they're doing is they're trying to beat the plan out of him. What did you plan with Luffy? What are you trying to do here in Wano? And he's just there smiling at them saying, y'all can kiss my fat ass. So that's how it ends. I really enjoyed the chapter. I thought it was a good build-up, a really good development of Momonosuke and um, for some reason, and then that whole Sunachi thing, I thought that was really cool. You know, this 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 fearless shout essentially that reminded them to be fearless, that reminded them that they... Um, you know, not to fight for themselves, not they, that the, that the, the, that the fight or whatever they were doing was more than just them, all of that good stuff. And the fact that Zoro also uses that same chant suggests that there might be more to Zoro. And we all know there's more to Zoro than meets the eye or more to his teacher at the least. So let me know what you guys thought of this chapter. Let me know what you guys thought of this review. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys 
in a bit.